There is a thought that troubles certain men at a certain point in their life. The thought of legacy. What they would leave behind if they were to retire or drop dead. There was a man from California that must have had this thought. He looked at all he had done and he felt it wasn't enough and that he ought to do more. So he took on a moniker, one based on his real name, and became known to the world overnight. Known as none other than Daddy Dada. He assembled a group of like-minded and kind-hearted individuals, music professionals and cheap actors, and created his musical masterpiece. Daddy Dada's first and only released track, Treat All Women With Respect. Heads up guys, I'm talking to you. Life's not easy, so what you gonna do? Step to the plate and be a man. Never hit a woman or abuse a child. It's just wrong and easy. It was a track with a message, an important one, and one the daddy held dear. Hitting women equals bad. Treat All Women With Respect was uploaded to YouTube at the beginning of 2015 in January. It was later accompanied by a Kickstarter project asking for a somewhat reasonable $25,000. But uh, let's just say that it did not raise that amount. The song divided the internet. There was certainly not much wrong with the message itself and the stance against domestic violence Daddy Dada had taken with the song. I mean, online edgelords aside, you'd be hard-pressed to find too many active supporters of domestic abuse. But some thought the song was just silly, and a video too bizarre. Others said it was too broad in scope, trying to tackle too many aspects at once. Others still, more with hindsight perhaps, saying it didn't tackle things equally because men suffer abuse too. And many would point out that though the song's creators held the best of intentions, the target audience for the song that is to say, people committing the abuse, were unlikely to, one, ever listen to it, and two, give even the faintest semblance of a fuck about it. The somewhat misguided attempt at a Kickstarter project didn't help either. What never caused much of a divide, however, was the overall consensus when it came to the song's artistic merits. It sucked. The hook was catchy enough, the beat was fine, but Daddy Dada was by no means a rapper. Don't be a baby daddy and walk away. Be a father, it's okay to stay. Father a child is just the beginning. With child and mother in your life, that is winning. Bon to quote The Independent, from the opening line, one, two, three, four, no more women on the floor, the message of the song is clear. Treat all women with respect, because what you give is what you get. The rest of the song follows a similar pattern, with Daddy Dada often abandoning the laws of rhyme and rhythm to get across his anti-violence message. Abandoning the laws of rhyme and rhythm being the key part here. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. There's time to talk about quality and lack thereof later. For now, let's start tackling the big questions. 1. How this whole song came to be, where all these people came from and what brought them together. Two. Who the heck is Daddy Dada? And three, what happened to everyone involved after this song and the failure of their Kickstarter project? Let's start with the first one. The project came to be as an offshoot, or at least in some capacity, in association with No More, a non-profit organization dedicated to stopping domestic violence and sexual abuse, which operates to this day. It was launched first in 2013, which means that it was still relatively fresh in 2015 when Daddy Dada stepped up to the plate. If you check Daddy Dada's Twitter presence, you'll find that the account had been dedicated to talking about domestic abuse prior to the release of the music video itself, and that the account never shared anything not related to Daddy Dada's and No More's efforts in that regard. Now, what about the musical talent behind the project? Although Daddy Dada himself was no professional lyricist, the beat was good, the instrumentals quite pleasant, and this man on the keyboard rather talented. Well, he's the man we can thank for everything that doesn't sound terrible on this track. George McKinto. According to his website, McKinto is a musician with quite the history behind him, having done concerts in dozens of countries, mastered various types of instruments, 
and played in front of folks like the Pope and Nelson Mandela. The site also says that his humanitarian efforts had him appointed as a goodwill ambassador for peace and development at the World Association of Former United Nations Interns and Fellows in 2001. WAFUNIF is the official alumni network of the UN, and so it seems that at the very least McKinto has had plenty of experience all around the world and hey, the music is pretty damn good. So we have no more. At the time, a fledgling group trying to spread awareness about domestic abuse, and McKinto, a California based musical artist with a long streak of humanitarian efforts. These two parties would be brought together, and they would be brought together by none other than Daryl Snyder? <laughs> Most media outlets refer to him as an aging lawyer or an ex lawyer of some kind, which was perhaps an accurate but unkind description for the man. According to his LinkedIn profile, Mr. Snyder had finished law school in 1974, and his first employment under a law firm as partner is listed in 1985, putting him as having had a career of between 30 and 40 years by the time he took on the name Daddy Dada in 2014 to 2015. Unfortunately, I couldn't find too many cases online which mentioned Snyder as attorney. None showed up on the California Bar website and only six on Trellis Law. But one of those was a divorce case, albeit one categorized as dissolution without minor children. Still, this suggested to me that Snyder had likely dealt with cases of divorce and domestic violence before, which would explain his personal interest in the matter. Though I couldn't tell you which paths crossed first, whether it was Snyder who came in contact with McKinto, or with the No More organization, or perhaps whether Snyder sought both of these parties out once he had already decided to take on the Daddy Dada mantle, I just couldn't tell you. Neither the No More site, nor the now defunct Daddy Dada site provide much in terms of any information like that. The website did, however, feature some other notable things, such as a mention of Dada being a loving husband, father and coach, further explaining his interest in stopping domestic and other abuse as well as the following lengthy quote. It is not all about you or me, as the popular song once declared. It is all about us, and whether together we can build a better team or community to accomplish clear goals that improve mankind. Narcissism leads down the path of destruction by focusing only on near-term, selfish, individual goals. It elevates each of our own desires, wants and needs above the general good leaving unhappy people with insatiable appetites for more of everything, the need for instant gratification, and denial of the joy of forming cooperative teams with common goals, hard work, and similar strengths. Quite powerful. Now, before I tackle question 3 of where exactly everyone involved is now, I'd like to step back as I often do to see if all the cynicism and snarkiness 10 years ago was warranted. Unsurprisingly, my answer is going to be a rather resounding no. Let's unpack things one at a time. There's a rather pedantic approach some detractors took, and while it never seemed to be the majority, I'd want to get it out of the way first. No, the fact that the campaign focused on violence against women and children doesn't mean that violence against men ought to be ignored or isn't an issue just because the song doesn't talk about it. Frankly, with the way poor Daddy Dada struggled to stay on beat and keep the rhymes going just with the subject matter he chose, I couldn't imagine how much worse it would be if after every bar, he'd also have to add, and the men too. A commenter on one of the articles nine years ago wrote quite aptly that this campaign existing didn't harm or stop any other campaign which did, in fact, tackle abuse of male victims. Snyder likely also encountered more abuse against women and children in his career as a lawyer and coach. So, there you go. As for effectiveness? Well, it's always hard to gauge how effective an awareness campaign is, or even is capable of being. If we're talking purely in terms of reach? The original Treat All Women With Respect video 
uploaded to YouTube on Daddy.us channel currently has 732,000 views. The video by Mimulus on it? 1.9 million. iDub's Kickstarter crap? 2.8 million. For what was most definitely a video produced on a shoestring budget by a man who had no business in the music industry, those are some damn good numbers. The video was also covered across multiple media outlets and was shared plenty on social media. It was fairly viral at the time. If we were to measure its success purely on viewing numbers, then this video did succeed. But the failure of the following Kickstarter project might suggest that at least overtly it didn't succeed in delivering its core message. But I have something to say on that account too, as we transition to talking about where everybody involved in the project is now. I believe two things are true. The first is that while this aging California lawyer telling you that hitting women is bad and you shouldn't do it, wouldn't change the mind of someone ready to do such a thing? What might change their mind, however, might be one of their favorite YouTubers reiterating that doing so is wrong. You might want to go for like a more of an emotional appeal with them, like, she's your wife, you should love and care for her, but don't beat her because you love and care for her. That's the opposite of loving and caring for someone, it's beating them to a bloody pulp. Or making fun of anyone who wouldn't vibe too much with the message of the song? I can guarantee there's gonna be people in the comments like, What about treat all men with respect? Yeah, and well, that's let's see, let's see where it is. Men already get it, don't they? How about we treat everybody with respect? Yeah. I agree. <laughs> that's a very good thing to say, everybody. Where are the, the treat, treat all men, men with, with respect, respect music videos? I know. I guarantee neither of them two people have ever had s in their lives. Yeah. That genuinely might make someone change their minds. But my second point is that this video was still made in a sort of transitionary time for PSA content. In the same vein as the Not Anymore campaign, lampooned by iDubs in another video. It's a project which recognized a problem in society, and decided to tackle it by addressing the perpetrators. Heck, that seems like a reasonable thing to do at first, but of course unless your target audience are very very young children, they're already either aware of their actions being wrong, or wouldn't have their minds swayed for the better by the PSA to begin with. Now, No More as an organization has kept going since, and is a global movement, boasting a pretty well-made site in various different campaigns aimed at stopping domestic, sexual, and other kinds of abuse. I'd like to draw attention to some parallel campaigns which have been growing strong since. The first being the ever-present anti-bullying campaign, one you still see mentioned everywhere in different forms across different countries, by different companies and organizations, in just everywhere. But one thing which has shifted over time is pretty apparent. From telling bullies how they're doing something wrong and they ought to be punished and ought to fear punishments, to telling victims to speak up and bystanders to step in or be considered accomplices. This guy, and he's with his girlfriend, and he's trying to get her to do something that she didn't want to do. So what'd you do about it? I didn't do anything. Whoa, what? Guys, don't be like my friend here who didn't do anything. Not doing anything is part of the problem. The person doing something wrong likely already knows they're doing something wrong, but a reminder for others to report these things and step in does a lot more good. Similarly, the hashtag MeToo movement has been a tremendous success at what it's set out to do. Not by telling abusers to reconsider their actions and stop, but by inviting victims to speak up and bring justice against said abusers. And so has the No More movement shifted gears. For the most part on their site you'll find campaigns aimed at spreading awareness not of how abuse is bad, but of how to prevent the abuse and to help stop said abuse when someone has fallen victim to it. And look, they tackle men's issues too. <coughs> Alright, that's No More, then what about McKinto? Well frankly he's rolling on as he ever was, traveling around the world making music and going on radio shows and TV shows in different countries. Seems like he's a pretty cool dude doing some good work across the globe, so good for him. And Daddy Dada? Well, unfortunately it seems that Treat All Women With Respect is to remain his only musical track. Mr. Snyder, according to his LinkedIn, remains a practicing lawyer, though exactly how that's been going or how he feels about this chapter of his life remains a mystery. It does seem that it's been going decently at least since the divorce case I mentioned earlier in the video is from 2016. Uh, correction, I actually looked him up again on the California State Bar, and 
it seems that he has been inactive at least since 2019. And perhaps it's for the better. For he has already done all he's had to do. And his mark on the internet has been immortalized. And ever since, no woman has ever been disrespected ever again. The end. Yeah. 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 Yeah.